Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be installing the new Cobb Redline carbon fiber intake. Cobb SF intake. We got the um, alternator belt cover right here as well. I got the whole thing, all the new carbon fiber pieces that Cobb just released for the 15 plus STI. And I'm really, really excited to install this one. Uh, I got all the parts and the boxes and everything that you need to install. This video is going to be solely just showing you how to install you know, going over my thoughts of how everything fits. Previously, if you guys don't know, I had the Cobb SF intake, the one that everybody has. Uh, I love that thing. It ran really well. It sounded awesome. When this one was released, it was kind of a no brainer for me. I wanted this thing so bad. Uh, and I love that it was a full one piece intake as opposed to two, you know, separate pieces and you had to reuse your stock snorkel. I hated that thing. I thought it looked so ugly, uh, but now it's nice, nicely beautiful one piece carbon fiber. Uh, and this piece right here is just kind of the cherry on top. I'm going to be fumbling through this just like everybody else because there's not really much on it right now. Uh, so I'm going to try to help you out and explain exactly just what I'm going through and what you need to do. And hopefully I don't make any mistakes. I don't really think I will. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward install from what I can tell. I hope you, anybody that is interested in installing this, I hope this video helps you. I hope it helps you install this very cleanly and understand what you're doing. For me, I'm going into this blindly because this, like I said, this is a brand new intake from Cobb. Uh, there's not much on it at all. So we'll see how this uh, installs. Hopefully it fits well, just based off of the quality and the parts that you get with it. And obviously the price. Um, I'm, I'm willing to bet this is going to fit really, really well. All right. So. so as you can see, I've already taken off my Cobb SF intake. I actually sold it to a subscriber. So thank you very much for that. I also sold my parent uh, alternator and belt cover here. So everything looks very unfinished and kind of incomplete and apart right now. And that's because I guess it is sort of. I assure you once I get this new Cobb stuff on, it's going to look way cleaner, <laughs> way nicer. Um, so obviously you can tell I have the Perrin um, shroud cover here, the radiator cover, whatever you call it. Uh, so I'm going to actually remove this side. I'm not sure if it fits, uh, to be completely honest, um, because the, um, the actual inlet of the Cobb one's a little bit different than the stock, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to run this, uh, which is going to be a little upsetting because I really do like this piece. Uh, but if it doesn't fit, I'm going to try to find another, another alternative. Uh, I know APR sells a really nice carbon fiber piece that kind of lays over top, but I'm not really sure um, what I'm going to do here. But I'm going to just take this side off for now. Uh, just so I don't scratch anything when I'm installing it. So it's just a couple bolts and I'll pop it off and then we'll get to actually putting the intake in. All right, so first I'm going to install the actual belt cover just so I can get that out of the way. It's very, very simple. Um, I had the parent alternate or the parent cover on first. So this rubber grommet was removed, but if you're you know coming from stock, you just leave that rubber grommet in. So you're gonna take this little black piece of hardware right here uh, and then just put it right into that rubber grommet right down here. And there you go, it fits right in. Uh, you want to remove this bracket here and the only way to get to it is through that hole. So if it's not lined up, all you're going to do is take a 19 millimeter wrench um, and just turn it right. You don't want to turn it left because you want to loosen it. Turn it ever so slightly until it lines up. Um, so you should have good access to the bolt there so you can reach through the hole. So kind of see it. See the bolt right there lined up. Uh, I believe it's a 10 millimeter. So you just want to reach through the hole with an extension and just make sure you don't drop it. <laughs> make sure you have a magnet because I ended up dropping it straight into the pulley. <laughs> not that it was hard to get, but uh, a magnet will just make it much easier. So far, I'm not crazy about how this is installed. Uh, just because you have to move the belt to it's just a cover you know it should be able to just bolt right to the um the oem factory you know bolting uh, pieces you know there should be like a spacer or something just so they can you know fit it properly but i mean it is what it is and we're going to take their bracket slide this in and kind of re repeat the process of what i just did you know i'm going to slide that bolt in there so you have some adjustment um, so you can go up or down based on where you need to go and then this one goes right into the actual cover so let me get the screw back in um, so I can slide this in and we'll get to putting the actual cover on. So I just have it in there loosely right now, so I'm able to move it. Uh, I'll tighten it down once I get it in the right spot, uh, but I just want to make sure that you know, everything is lining up properly. So it's not that bad. Let me tighten everything up. Then we'll, you know, actually take a full look of what it looks like installed. Uh, and then we'll get to actually installing the intake as well. All 
All right, so there we go. The cover's installed. Uh, okay install. I mean, it's it's very simple, but the only hard part is just moving that pulley right there to gain access to that bolt. It's not hard, but it's just a pain in the ass. And a lot of people don't really have 19 millimeter uh, wrenches. Thankfully, I did, and I was able to do it you know, very easily. Uh, just make sure you turn clockwise, not counterclockwise. So you obviously don't want to loosen that. I ended up doing a uh, counter at first, and I realized I started to loosen it. So I was like, whoa. Let me just you know go the other way you won't have to move it that much hopefully it kind of lines up to begin with but mine was a little off mine was probably right about here so i had to turn it a little bit more uh, but otherwise very simple very straightforward uh, besides that uh, you know the brackets on there nice and tight and it looks really really good uh, the one thing that i guess i really liked about the Perrin one is that it completely covered the full uh, alternator piece this one obviously shows it uh, but it's not really you know doesn't really bother, bother me that much. Uh, plus it allows this thing to breathe a little bit better, to be completely honest. The parent one just covered everything, so I guess it retained a little bit more heat. Uh, also carbon fiber doesn't retain as much heat as you know metal. Uh, so having metal pieces in there actually would create more engine, you know, internal temper temperatures under the hood and everything. So I guess having something uh, that's a little bit more prone to not heating up as much uh, is a little bit better. I know it's just a cover, but hey, um, <laughs> I guess I'm just trying to justify spending $125. Uh, but either way, I'm just joking. Uh, it's a really nice piece. It's on there really well. Uh, it's not going anywhere. The bracket's really nice. I thought it'd be really cool uh, if you can get some like titanium uh, hex screws there. I think that'd be a really nice touch or like a, a nice gloss black um, Allen keys, which is something easy to, that I can easily do down the road. Uh, but these are, they're not silver. They're kind of like a gray, so it blends in. So it's really not that bad. I thought it'd be really nice if they included that just like their, you know, the other pieces that they had and the hardware for the intake. Uh, there's some nice, really satin black pieces, but now for the main event, let's install this thing. All right, so now it's time to actually install the intake, the main thing that you guys wanna see. Uh, so this is everything that comes with the intake in regards to what you need to install. It comes with all the brackets, all the hardware you need, rubber grommets, you know, the clamps, um, you know, filter, everything. So basically there's some there's some assembly required prior to putting this in. You don't just drop it in because uh, basically you want to put the filter on. You want to get all your math ready and everything because basically you just want to be able to drop this whole thing in at once. You know, you don't really uh, necessarily do it all in separate parts. You basically get everything ready to go on your table or wherever you're working on. And then when it's ready to drop in, it, everything just goes into place right then and there. Uh, so let's get the filter on and all the pieces needed. Uh, I'll explain what you need to do and kind of the steps, and then we'll drop it in the car. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is you have these foam seals. What you wanna do is break this open. There's a bunch of them actually in here, but they're all pre-cut. So all you gotta do is just kind of peel them off. Um, so you can kind of see there's all different ones inside. Kind of hard to tell, but. Uh, the first one you want to do is take out the big circle around the whole thing uh, and this one's going to go around here. There's already pre-punched out holes uh, so where the filter actually screws into so all you do is just literally pop them out. Just line it up with those holes and peel off the backing here. I'm going to line it up with the first hole here. Kind of just work my way around. There you go. Got the uh, foam seal on. Kind of bunched up right here a little bit but doesn't really, not a big deal. But all the holes are lined up. This was kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt to put on just because it was so sticky. Got it on, got all the holes lined up. This bottom one's okay. Stretches a little bit, so it lines up right there. Next part, they actually tell you to put the seals over here, but I don't think I'm gonna do that because I'm not even gonna use it. Uh, so I don't want, I'd rather the carbon be shown there. Um, so I'm gonna you know, just hang on to these pieces over here that are popping out right here. Um, I'm not gonna use them right now. I don't find a need for it, so. Uh, I'm just going to wait to, if I, if I want to install the plate, I'll do that later, but I just rather the carbon showing. Uh, plus I don't want to get these all dirty if I'm going to use the actual plate down the road, which I probably won't. Now that we got that put on is we want to get this bracket out of this bag. Just got to rip it. No time to open it. So this is the bracket I'm talking about. Um, and then we're just going to get one of these larger rubber seals that the kit comes with. And we're just going to pop it into this little hole here. It comes with a few of these. Um, We'll find out where they all go, but this is the first one. So we're good to go, we've got the rubber seal on. Let's go to the next step. We're gonna go back to the foam seals. Uh, this is just to create a really good seal and to help any noises or anything like that. It just kind of helps, you know, make it a really solid piece. Um, so you wanna take this looking uh, foam piece that comes in the, in the kit 
uh, and you just want to put it on here. You want to make sure the bend, so you can see the bends that way. You want to put it on this side. So it's just going to line up, go right on there. So let's take this backing off here. So we got it off. This is kind of hard to do on camera, but do my best. Perfect. So this bracket is ready to go. We got the rubber grommet on here and the, uh, the rubber foam seal, or not really rubber, but foam seal. Next up, we want to take this big, nice metal bracket here. Um, and we're going to do the same thing kind of like we did on the small piece. We're going to take the larger rubber grommet, pop it into this hole here. Same situation. Go back to our little foam seals here. This piece right here, you're just going to pop that out. And what you're going to do is you're going to want to have the bracket facing like this. So see it's bent that way. We're going to want, want to look like that. We're just going to line this seal up with that hole and put it right there. Again, let's try to get this on camera. And what I'm going to do is just line it up over the hole first and kind of just stick it into place. So this bracket is ready and let's move on to the next step. All right, so we're moving back to the intake now. And we're going to be looking at these two holes right here. So we're just going to take the two small rubber grommets that were included in your, in your intake. So these two right here, and we're just going to pop them into those two holes. Got a microfiber here just so I can turn it over so it's not slammed against the actual workbench here. But let me try going through the bottom. It's probably easy if you put some detail spray on here or something, but there we go. It's a riveting tutorial right here watching me shove rubber into carbon fiber. <laughs> but hey, I want to show you each step and then I'm not I'm not some know-it-all and you know, I'm just doing it just just like everybody else would do in the garage. So, okay, cool. We got both rubber grommets in right here and here. Uh, now I believe we're going to be moving on to the filter and actually getting everything ready on the MAF side. Uh, so let's take that next step. All right, so we're going to take this bracket and we're simply just going to slide it right over this MAF housing. Um, you can see there's three notches here and there's three bolts. So one, two, and three. Uh, so basically we're just going to line these notches up with that. It just slides right over. You want to put the actual uh, machined out pieces up or facing away from the filter. So we're going to slide this on somehow. There we go. And we're going to line it up like this. So you can see the three holes and the three notches line up. I mean, I'm just holding it in place right now, but you get the idea. So we're just going to go into our little bag of bolts to be using the shorter Allen screws. I believe these are eight millimeters or nine millimeters. I forget what it said, but um, we're going to use these and we're just going to screw it into these three holes with the notches lined up on the bracket here. Uh, so this gets tightened down. So let's go ahead and do that. So I got the screws in, one, two, and three. Uh, I left it a little loose because there is some room for adjustments. Now we're simply going to pop the intake over. There we go. All I'm gonna do is tighten it up. So the next step in the Cobb direction is actually tells you to install on the intake, but what I wanna do is actually wanna put the MAF sensor in because I wanna protect it inside here. Um, you know, I don't like it sitting out and you know, I can knock it over or something like that. So I like it to be in here nice and protected. So you just want to take off this sticker. Obviously you don't want to put it on with that. And then you're just going to take your, your map sensor and it only goes in one way. Um, so you can't mess up which way it goes. So those holes just line up, push it in. And then you have two little tiny Allen screws that you can use to actually screw this in. Uh, what I like to do is just go back and forth on this when I'm tightening it down. Uh, Cause I just, you know, just to give it even pressure as you're putting it, tightening it down. So there's no air gaps or anything like that. Now we're actually going to be inserting the actual filter into the housing here. Um, so basically you just want to line up the holes here. Uh, you want to put the sensor, the, the map sensor facing up. So the next step you want to do is actually put the silicone elbow onto the actual housing here. Um, so the first thing you want to do is slide one of your, seek, or your one of your um, hose clamps on the bigger side where it says cob towards the actual intake. This side goes to your stock uh, stock connection, your stock hose. You want to slide this one on, same thing. And now we're going to get to actual engine bay prep. So putting the brackets on and everything, and then we'll be able to drop this thing in. Next step is you want to move these two 12 mil millimeter bolts. This is actually the radiator stage, so you need to be able to get some access behind it. 
Next up, you want to take the small Allen screws and put the little washer there, and you want to take these little mounting pins. And basically, you want to go um, underneath or behind the radiator. You're going to push it back a little bit. Uh, and there's two little holes in right here and right here. Uh, basically, you're going to stick the screw through and then screw these right on top. And then you're going to tighten these down with a 17 millimeter wrench. All right guys, so I got the pins in here and here. A little bit of a pain in the butt. You gotta push the radiator back a little bit and then you gotta reach under and hold the, the Allen screw there and then screw these pins in. And then you need to get an Allen key under there to, rent, uh, to tighten this down with a 17 millimeter. A little bit of a pain uh, just because you're doing it blindly and it's very easy to drop those, which I did once. Uh, but thankfully, uh, I have my little trusty magnet, this thing, and I was able to retrieve it very quickly so it's not really a big deal. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be making some mistakes and dropping them and not being able to find them and getting really upset. So just be really careful putting these in. Uh, it's a little, a little tricky. I got them in nice and tight. So let's move on to the next step. Next up, we're going to want to actually remove or loosen. Uh, kind of hard to see the bolt right there. Kind of see this bracket right here. And then there's a bolt right there. So you want to loosen that. That's a 12 millimeter. I believe the cop instruction says 10 millimeter, but that is a 12. Uh, so you want to loosen that. And then you're going to take this bracket and slide it underneath that bracket. So we'll have a good, nice, uh, strong bracket for the, the intake to hook onto. So we got the 12 millimeter bolt tightened down from the uh, bracket right here. And we also got a 10 millimeter supplied bolt goes right into the original intake bracket hole. Uh, so now we got a really nice sturdy uh, bracket right here. So now it's time to actually install the intake. Oh, uh, before I do, I believe I need to take this out. All right, moment of truth. Now it's finally the actually time to install the actual intake. So let me get this map sensor harness out of the way so I don't forget to do that. So basically they're saying to actually dip this part in first and then kind of work your way in. I uh, just want to be really careful not to scratch. A little nerve wracking, but it seems to be going okay. All right, guys. So I got it fitted in. Uh, fits really, really well. Uh, the only unfortunate thing is I'm not going to be able to be used to use my uh, parent radiator shroud. Um, it just doesn't fit. This is just a bigger intake scoop here. And you know, this side fits obviously. Uh, but this side, it's just, you know, it's a little bit different than stock, just the shape of it. So it's not going to fit. Uh, I was trying to think of a way to get it to, but you know, it would just end up scratching it and, um, it's just not meant to fit. So I'm going to try to find another option. The fitment is spot on. Uh, the thing is in there so tight. I don't even have them bolted down yet. I mean, all the, the clamps are loose. I don't even plug anything in yet. It's just literally, I just plopped it in gotten into position and make sure that all the hoses were connected or you know this hose um, and it just popped right in so so nice so I definitely could tell the uh, the R&D that Cobb put into this to make sure it would fit um, so definitely major props props to them um, and I'm really happy with just kind of how that all works out really really cool so let me get everything bolted down tightened up uh, and then we'll kind of you know just do a little recap and just what I think uh, another I'll do another video of the actual sound and everything I don't think it's gonna change much from the normal SF intake but again I want to do my initial reaction with you guys do a whole video on that so you can get my real uh, real-time reaction and, and what I think of this and if I do notice any diff sound difference because like I said this is made of carbon carbon does actually make a really cool sounding induction noise uh, I don't know if it's gonna really you know be like that for this but we'll see um, you never know uh, but overall install was pretty simple uh, definitely a little bit more involved than the other intakes that I've installed in this car just because you know you're having to take a lot a lot more bolts out to get to certain pieces and everything but honestly I almost prefer that because you can tell that they took a lot of time to do this uh, I make sure everything is I mean this thing is like crazy sturdy um, you know the car the any other intake that I had before it kind of wobbled a little bit and everything but this is definitely very OEM fitment. It just fits so well. It's so sturdy and, and uh, I can really tell that they took some serious time to do this. So let me get everything bolted up and then we'll finish this up.
All right, guys, so that is the install of the new Cobb Redline carbon fiber intake as well as their alternator belt cover. Uh, pretty straightforward. The, their directions are, are very easy to follow. Uh, I hope this video helps so you guys get a better idea of exactly what you need to do as opposed to just sitting there reading and seeing pictures. Uh, the, obviously, this was a little more detail and me explaining things, so I hope this helped. Uh, I haven't even started the car yet, so I have no idea how it sounds. I haven't gone for a drive or anything like that. I'm going to do a separate video just going over my thoughts of what I think. If I, if I hear any sound differences or anything like that, um, you know, obviously I'm going to report back to see if, if my tune is okay, which I'm pretty sure it's going to be. Um, but I'm obviously going to be setting, sending my data logs over to my, to my tuner, Brent Tuning, just to make sure. Uh, but either way, the install was really simple. It was really straightforward. There's a few little things that you kind of just have to work around. Uh, but obviously, it really didn't take that long. And I'm overall super happy with how this thing looks. It, and, and also the fitment. It's so, it fits so well. It looks really good in the engine bay. Uh, I got the carbon fiber uh, shrouds over here. So everything is just, it looks really, really nice. Uh, the only thing I was disappointed about was the parent, uh, you know, the shroud right here. That thing didn't fit. I decided to actually use this side. The actual functionality of this piece is actually to divert air into the air box. Um, so when you have the full piece there, it actually helps uh, move the air right into the actual circle. Uh, so with this piece not here, I mean, they're still diverting the air with, with the rubber stripping here uh, as well. There's there's some kind of um, you know, piece here to help, but I, I just like the look of it so much. Uh, and then I also realize this really does help with air. Because if you look on this side, uh, this is actually blocked off with some foam to help the air stay in uh, on act in here so it actually pushes it over to the snorkel instead of just not using it and keeping it in the garage and just you know sitting in a box i figured i might as well use the part that i like the most which is the part that actually has the parent logo on it uh, i think it just ties in really nice and just much much cleaner i figured i would update you guys on that since i didn't mention that you weren't able to use a whole piece when i was installing this um, so i just decided to use this side and i really do like it i think it looks really really good super happy really really like how it turned out if you guys have any questions about the install or anything like that don't be afraid to ask in the comments below i'll be more than happy to answer i'll be sure to link the intake as well as the cover in the description below so if anybody's interested in getting it uh, you know go ahead the link is right there i bought it directly from cobb i'm supporting their brand um, and i love their stuff and obviously i've been running it for many years so um, and this is just one of their best uh, products i've ever gotten from them so Huge thank you to Cobb. They got it here super fast. That's it for this video, guys. Again, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I love answering the questions. I love the communication. Be sure to check out some old videos and my previous videos. I have a ton on this car. Keep it clean, keep it simple, and I'll catch you in the next one.